where I talk and I make absolutely no sense, somebody let me know. Right? I listen to this guy and I'm like, I know what's going on and what he's saying makes no sense. Oh wait, he talks about blood urea, nitrogen, and creatinine. He talks it for 10 minutes and I'm like, I know, I'm stupider now for listening to that. I don't even know what BUN and creatinine are now. <laughs> okay. Did I finish the cardiovascular? All the questions. So I gave you three medications. I gave you diuretics. And remember, you're not getting credit if you don't explain them. Do you understand? You got me? Diuretics, calcium channel blockers, beta blockers. Say yes. Did I go through all the questions? No. Did you go through, I don't think you, did you go through arterial blood, how it knows where it's supposed to go? No, but I will. That's an easy one. You already know that. Mm -hmm. You kind of did when you were. Right, but I'm going to go over it again. Okay. Well, didn't I show you that? I, I, I think I did. No, because I always do this. I do. Watch. Are you recording? Mm hmm Yeah. Okay. Ready? Watch. I know I did this. Hang on. Did I do this? No. Yep. What are these? A tree. Well, that's a tree. What are these? Clouds. What's that? Lighting. Okay. Okay. Have you ever seen in your life a bolt of lightning go perfectly straight down? No. No. And you never will. That's because, watch. Electricity, air, blood, water, and most important, people always take the path of least resistance. Is air a good conductor of electricity? It sucks. A tree isn't much better, but it's better than air. That's why people say electricity, lightning always hits the tallest object. It's looking for the path of least resistance. So if this tree gets hit by lightning and burns down, who's the next path? Timmy. Right? So if you're out in the field, what do they tell you to do? Get as low to the ground as possible. Say yes. So blood always takes the path of least resistance too. Who's with me? So here we go. Watch. That's why you had to learn metabolism. Well, I shouldn't say learn it. You had to go over it. That was a little thing, man. No big. Okay, here we go. So watch. What's that? Ah. Uh, I had this one student, man, Timmy, you draw terribly. And I go, come up here and do a better job. She actually did. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it is. They're Nikes. 
<laughs> you follow? Yeah. Okay, now watch. Here's your little left ventricle. You got me? And it's got blood in it. When you start running, where do you become metabolically active? Arms. Arms and legs. In this case, just a leg. Okay? <laughs> so in order to contract a muscle, you have to use ATP. And when you use ATP, what do you build up inside the muscle cells? ADP. And what's the signal that tells the enzymes of metabolism within your muscle cells to work faster? The buildup of ADP. So you will start breaking down glucose and fat, the fuel that's most readily available, and start making ADP back into ATP. Do you follow that? And you will start building up carbon dioxide, heat, ADP, and hydrogen ions. And what do those do to the arteries that supply those arms and legs? <gasps> Who said constrict? It will cause those arteries that supply your arms and legs to dilate. They will get bigger. Boom. So when that little left ventricle contracts, Where's the vast majority of that warm, red, oxygenated blood going to go? It's going to go to the path of least resistance, and that is the arteries that are dilated say yes. That's how arterial blood knows where it's supposed to go, and it's perfect. It's perfect. Watch. Watch how perfect it is. The more metabolically active you are, the more byproducts of metabolism you will produce. And that will cause the arteries to get bigger. Because if you're more metabolically active, you need more oxygen to sit at the end of the electron transport chain. So it is metabolism that dictates blood flow. That's beautiful. Tell me you got that. Now watch. What's more important, to digest Taco City tacos, which are, by the way, undigestible, <laughs> or running or fighting for your life? Good. Now watch. Your body don't know the difference that you just had 10 tacos for 10 bucks, then your buddy calls and says, hey, you want to play basketball? You're like, yeah. So you got all this blood going to your guts, and then you decide to go play basketball. Are you following me? Your body interprets that is that you're running or fighting for your life. Where is it more important to send blood flow to? Your arms or your legs or your guts? When you're running or fighting for your life? So lack of blood flow to your guts when you're trying to digest food causes your food to say, I'm not getting digested. So you Ralph. Tell me you got that. That's why when your mom said, don't go swimming, wait an hour till after you're done eating because you get a cramp and you could die, she was exactly right. Because most of your mothers, you don't even know about this, took this class online. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me you followed that. Mm -hmm. Tell me that makes sense. Mm -hmm. right. Now it's going to be perfect. It's going to be beautiful. This is my shirt, man. This thing is totally falling apart, man. Want to see how ghetto I am? Want to? Yeah. What? This sleeve is totally jacked up. <laughs> so you just rolled it up. So I just rolled it up. Because <laughs> that was iron in it, you know? And then I did, I always iron the sleeves the last. And I'm like, I'm not wasting a good iron in jet. So I just rolled it up. Who cares? Do you care? All right. So that's why I can show you. <laughs> then I got my other shoes. Did I tell you that I glued them? <laughs> yeah, I glued them and I glued them. I swear to you. Who cares? Right? I hit 40.
40, right? Looked in the mirror. I'm like, that's way too much work <laughs> to try to look presentable. Okay, watch. How many people have CNAs? You got to turn patients every two hours that are mobile, right? Why? So they don't get a bed sore, right? Watch. Let's say this is the crack of my butt. Kind of looks like it. <laughs> are, are you following? So when a person lays down on their back, that little bone, the coccyx, puts pressure on their skin, mm -hmm. cutting off blood flow. Are you following? Mm -hmm. So watch. My palm of my hand is my crack of my butt. <laughs> All right? So watch. I'm cutting off blood flow to the crack of my butt. Are you with me? Is the crack of my butt, the skin, still alive? Yeah. What's it making? <laughs> the byproducts of metabolism. What do the byproducts of metabolism do to arteries that supply that part of the body? Dilates them. And arterial blood is red and warm because it contains oxygen. Say yes. So when you roll them over and relieve the pressure, the skin turns red. That's the parts of the skin that lack blood flow. Once you relieve the pressure, it will turn red because it lacked blood flow, and it built up the byproducts of metabolism. Listen up, because this is true. The longer it stays red, the longer it lacked blood flow. And if this stays red permanently, then my hand is going to rot off. <laughs> if that person's got a reddened area that doesn't go away, that skin is going to break down. How long can skin survive? without blood flow. Four minutes. Four, four minutes. So we leave them on their back for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> All right. For twelve. For twelve. Four, four hours. hours. Four hours. That's why you right? It I shouldn't even have told you that. Because then you say, well I got time. <laughs> so we'll update my Facebook status now. That's why you turn them every two hours. Say yeah. And then watch, in CNA class, you know what you were taught? Once you roll them over, to gently rub that area, weren't you taught that? Mm -hmm. Do you know why? When you rub the skin, it produces friction, and friction produces heat. And what does heat do to arteries? So more blood flow will go there. You know who will explain that to you? Nobody. You think I'm lying? Go ahead. Can't you see an answer? Right? She dropped my foot. <laughs> These shoes are messed up too. You know what's the most expensive thing I ever bought myself? My golf clubs. I spent like 400 bucks on these things. That's it. In all the money that I made in my lifetime, that's all I've ever spent on myself. What about your house? Danny, you got to have a place to live. Right? That ain't just for me. Right? I ain't got no Harley or... Did I tell you about that? You broke your key on it. <laughs> did I tell you about the Harley? Yeah. Tell us about the key. Can I tell you this real quick story and then we're done? Right? Because I explained this. Watch. This is a true story. This is about six years ago. Six or seven. Just listen. Okay, and then we'll, I'll give you a break and then we're gonna start the respiratory system. All right, watch. My sister likes ri riding bikes, right? She likes Harleys. So I'm taking my girlfriend to the store and we drive past her house and it was like a Saturday, like late morning, right? So I see her out in the garage. So I said, hey, let's just stop. And she bought herself a new Harley, soft tail, right? And uh, I go, man, that's a nice one. So I go, how much you pay for it? She goes, 24. 
I said, I still got my endorsement. Can I take it for a ride? She goes, yeah, go ahead. So it had GPS, hand warmers, the whole nine yards, right? So I'm taking it for a ride. I'm like, this is a nice bike. I go, you know what? you got a bad neck. She's had three neck surgeries. You should get a trike. I go, why don't you sell that to me? <laughs> and she goes, how m I go, how much you want for it? 24. I said, okay. So I bought it, right? And for like two summers, I'm tooling around. I'm like, this is nice, right? I'll never forget a blue Ford pickup truck cut me off and I had to dump it. And I'm like, I am so support for, at that time, you know, a 13-year-old kid. I can't do this anymore. So I left it in my garage. Gets better. I'm in my house, it's summer, and I hear these three bikes pull up into my driveway. And my human turd friend nephew is on the back of one of his buddy's bikes. So he comes to my door, hey Tim, um, can I use your bike? I go, why? Well, we wanted to go for a bike ride. I go, isn't it a prerequisite to have a bike, to go on a bike ride? Well, I thought you'd let me use yours. I go, why would you think that? Why would you even think that? So anyways, I had this brainstorm. This is a true story. I don't have it on this computer, but I can show you. I had a brainstorm. I said, okay, here's the deal. I have a brother with cerebral palsy, right? Profoundly retarded, total care. Diapers, the whole nine yards. So the reason I teach night classes all the time, because in the morning, I go over there, I shower, shave them, get him ready, and he goes to work, right? So this is when my mom was alive, and I said, here's the deal. If you can go over to grandma's for 30 days, and grandma doesn't complain about you, that you're, not, you're late and you're not doing a good job, I will give you that bike. I'll give it to you. You're kidding. I said, yep. We typed up the document, both signed it. Guess how long he lasted? Two days. Wow. Two days. That was a legal binding contract. If he would have done that for 30 days, he would have got a $24,000 soft tail with a custom paid job, hand warmer, GPS, it was beautiful. Two days. I tell people this in Chicago, Tim, I would have drove from Chicago. You can do anything for a month. <laughs> I said, the reason I typed that up, because I knew he would never do it. I wouldn't do it, offer it to you guys. You would do it. <laughs> <laughs> the reason he didn't show up the third day, he was coming down from a crack high, Tamaya. Oh. <laughs> that is the human turd. I looked at him one time, and I go, and how many months pregnant are you now? Is it 97? <laughs> Is this your sister's son? Yeah. My sister, his mother, won't let him live with her. Right. <laughs> right. And I said, the only thing you ever did right in your life is you would never had a child. All right, ready? Ready? We're going over the respiratory system now. Say yeah. How many people printed off the respiratory questions? Rachel, Bakesia, who else? Nobody else? Megan? Okay, Megan's looking for a little appreciation there. <laughs> Wait, I think I got them. Hang on. Hang on, I think want, I might have Do you want them. us to tell you the questions? No. Okay. Wait. Hey, I got it. <laughs> See, it's the little things. I might not have enough. Anybody want to leave? Yeah. <laughs> we all want to leave, right? You don't have to stay. Are you kidding me? If everyone left, who would I teach?
arm wrestle for it. Is there any extra ones over there? You're good? Everybody's good. You can have it go down. Okay. Watch. 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 Are you watching? Uh, wait, I figured out how to do this now. If I click that, my uh, my liver failure picture, um, it takes me to the my channel. Huh. I got uh, 484 subscribers. I think if you get like 50,000, they start advertising. So I figure in about 78 years. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Write this down. Write this down. There's a video that explains how and why we breathe. There's a question on the respiratory quiz that says, how and why we breathe, Brittany. Guess what video? <laughs> right, right there. And it's only 11 minutes. You could deal with that. You could watch that while you're on the toilet. <laughs> All right. Uh, I have this book called The Textbook of Medical Physiology by Arthur Guyton. That's on the back of my toilet down my basement. Well, I read it. You know why? Watch, watch. That's our only place. It's our fortress of solitude. Right, guys? Right? Right, guys? Right? We go in there and we don't think about nothing. We just take care of business and maybe read a book. Or a phone. Or their phone. Their phone. I can bring my phone in there. Really? There's turds in there. <laughs> so, yeah. No. That's a lie face. Yeah. I don't no. I don't bring my phone into the yeah. why would I bring my phone into the Play bathroom? Candy crush or something, you do it. <laughs> you text Christopher. <laughs> Wait, I gotta show you something. <laughs> this was so creative on my part. I'm not creative, but like this is the best. You should put it under the light. Wait, wait, hang on. Where is it? <laughs> this is probably the most creative thing ever. Are now, you, now remind, re I, I gotta remind you that I, wait, I. Are you recording? You might want to not record. Oh, I don't care. Okay. Um, now I told you what he did right, with his child and stuff. Yeah. It's all documented everything. So I changed his name on my phone to, wait, you can't see it, wait. Father Knows Best. <laughs> Come on, tell me that's not funny. I can't see. 
see that well, but it looks like it is. <laughs> <laughs> that's so stupid. But I think, don't you think that's, that's creative? Yeah. That's the most creative thing I've ever done in my life. I'm so proud of it. <laughs> I showed it to my son. He started cracking up. <laughs> don't you think that's funny? It's funny. Uh, whatever. <laughs> Is there a link to this video on Blackboard, or do we just have to get you can just to it? You can no, uh, just write that down. That's why I brought it up. I don't know if it's on Timmy videos or whatever. Just write this down. Okay, okay. Then, then write this down mm -hmm. and make sure you watch that. All right? Huh? What are all the other videos that we have to watch? Oh, they're, they're, one they're coming. Don't worry about it. Oh, you just haven't put them on yet? I just haven't put them on. I've been lazy. Oh. Well, are you recording? I don't know what don't I'm doing. Am I? So yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay, enough of that sass. <laughs> Okay, uh, we're going over respiratory. Yeah? Okay, watch. What's the goal of the body, real quick? What's the goal of the cardiovascular system? Good. So the goal of the respiratory system is to maintain airflow. Air <laughs> okay. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. His kid missed his Christmas play because he was coming down from his crack high and he couldn't wake up in time to bring him. Can, you t can I tell you how sad that is? Yeah, but he's a pillar of the community, that one. How He shouldn't. <clears throat> All right. Now... Just so you know, we're gonna the stars come out in respiratory. Watch. We got Glenn close. <laughs> right? Then it gets even better. Hold up. Where is it? Here it is. Tiger Woods with pneumonia. <laughs> Tell me that don't look like Tiger Woods, yeah, right? I like him. Tiger Woods with pneumonia. <laughs> Year and air, we have Kenny from South Park. <laughs> Not even kidding. All right, so <clears throat> here we go. Here's the respiratory system, right? So watch. The goal of the respiratory system is to maintain airflow. Tell me you got that. All right. Now, a couple of terms you got to be familiar with, right? Number one. Ventilation. I'm not going to write it. You're going to write it. Ventilation is the physical movement of air in and out of your lungs. The physical movement of air in and out of your lungs. Got me? Number two, respiration. And respiration is the ex physical exchange of gases, oxygen and carbon dioxide. <clears throat> Ready? How many people got that? So when they put a tube down your throat and they put you on a machine to help you breathe, that machine is called a ventilator because all it's doing is putting air in and out of your lungs. Say yes. So respiration, there are two types. Ready? You have external respiration. What's the smallest blood vessel you have in the pulmonary circulation? What's it called? Pulmonary capillary. And you learned that every pulmonary capillary is associated with a one cell membrane thick air sac called an alveoli. And the alveoli, one cell membrane thick alveoli, 
right? And then for supper, you could have ravioli. If you just had one ravioli, it would be a ravioli. Ravioli-less. Uh, are you with me? And that's, that's a one-cell membrane-thick air sac. What's good in the air that we breathe in? Good. So oxygen is highly concentrated in the alveoli, and the pulmonary capillary is highly concentrated in CO2 because it's coming back from the cells. So this is external respiration. You are exchanging oxygen and carbon dioxide with the alveoli and the pulmonary capillary. Say yes. Then all that newly oxygenated blood comes back to what side of the heart? The left side. And the left side sends that oxygenated blood down to where? The cells of the body. So then you have internal respiration. And internal respiration occurs at the systemic capillary and the cell. So the arterial end of the capillary is high in oxygen. The byproduct of cellular metabolism is CO2. Gases, boom. Arterial blood becomes venous blood. And all the veins of the body dump their venous blood into the right side of the heart. Then the right side of the heart pumps the blood to the lungs say yes. How many people followed that? Okay, so those are two terms that you should be familiar with. Ventilation, respiration, and then internal and external respiration. All right? Okay, now, the functions of the respiratory system are relatively straightforward. Number one, it is to maintain O2 and CO2 levels of, very important, arterial blood. You got me? Number two, write this down. If you tattoo it someplace, I'll give you extra credit. <clears throat> if you make it into a bumper sticker. Would anyone ever consider getting a tattoo of this? If you get what? No. That's perverse. For real? An actual tattoo? Yeah. With all the intermediates? CO2 is an acid. So what system controls carbon dioxide? We're talking about it right now. <laughs> and the respiratory system controls CO2. So the respiratory system helps control pH. You got me? The other thing that the respiratory system does is it warms filters and humidifies the air we breathe. Those are the big functions of the respiratory system. I'm going to say this and then I'm going to explain it to you. It's also in the video on how and why we breathe. But watch. I'm going to say, just put some parentheses. Write this down. CO2 is the stimulus for breathing. You ever watch those criminal shows? Like those murder shows, right? NCSI. You ever watch it? You never watch it. Okay. I know. They're going to have NCSI like Harvard. Harvard, Wisconsin, <laughs> Oak Creek, <laughs> NCSI, my backyard. So uh, watch, how did they know somebody drowned? 
There's what? There's water in their lungs. How did water get in their lungs? Watch. Can you control your breathing? Yeah, you can. You better write this down. Better not pout. The diaphragm is a skeletal muscle. The diaphragm is a skeletal muscle. The diaphragm is a skeletal muscle. And if it's a skeletal muscle, it needs a nerve to stimulate it to contract, say yes. Okay, so watch. How people drown is this. They will hold their breath as long as they can. But what's the stimulus for breathing? Dude, I wrote that down. When the CO2 gets high enough, the brain, the lower portions of the brain will take over and you can try to hold your breath as long as you want and it will override that and you will take a breath in. And if you're underwater, you will breathe water. That's how you drown. Tell me you got that. So. Um, does anybody here have spoiled kids? Okay. <clears throat> well, uh, kids uh, hold their breath. I want the G.I. Joe with the Kung Fu grip or I'm going to hold my breath, right? There are little turds out there that will do that till they pass out. They're evil. <laughs> I knew this one kid, and when he came into the ER, he cut himself, right? He could throw up on command. I'm like, damn, that's a, that's a talent. He could make himself throw up. Anyways, <clears throat> if they do that, parents freak out, ooh, ooh, right? Watch. When he builds up enough CO2, he'll, even if he passes out, he will start breathing on his own. Tell me, so let him. Now, if you really don't like the kid, when he passes out, stuff a dirty sock down there. <laughs> tell, me, <laughs> tell me you got that. Yeah. All right? So... CO2 is the stimulus for breathing. Oxygen, oxygen just happens to come along for the ride, but it's CO2 that causes you to breathe. Say yes. All right, so here we go. First of all, write this down. The lungs float in your thoracic cavity. They are not anchored down. The lungs themselves actually float inside your lungs. So can you bruise your lungs? Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. Because they're, they're free floating. If you get into a car accident, your lungs can smash into the front part of your chest and you can actually get lung contusions, bruises of your lungs. Say so, yeah. Now watch. Just like the heart, just like the heart, you have, hang on, I can't see this. Oh, here we go. Hang on. The lungs have two linings. I want this. You have a tough outer lining that lines the inside of the thoracic cavity. And that tough outer lining that lines the inside of the thoracic cavity is called the parietal pleura. And I'm going to write this down. The parietal pleura is directly connected to the diaphragm. That's very important that you know that. I said it, and I'm spelling it. The parietal pleura is directly connected to the diaphragm. Then you have this space called the pleural space. And then you have the lungs itself. Just like the heart, you have that thin epicardial lining. The lungs themselves have a delicate saran wrap that covers the lung tissue itself. And that is called the visceral Pleura. Can you see that? Yeah. Visceral. Visceral means guts. Visceral. 
pleura. And just like the heart, these two membranes are referred to as serous membranes, so they will secrete a lubricant. So as the lungs are expanding and deflating, those linings do not develop friction. Have you ever heard of a condition called pleurisy? Mm -hmm. Never heard of it or you did hear of it? Yeah. Or pleuric chest pain, right? So what can happen, and this is no joke, especially people who smoke crack or meth, it can actually dry those serous membranes up and they can get pleuric chest pain. So don't smoke crack or meth. Are you writing that down? Yeah. Okay, good. <clears throat> All right, so this is the lining of the, the outer part of the lungs. And again, this is very important. I'm gonna tell you this, and it's in that video, but I'm gonna mention it again. The visceral and parietal pleura of both lungs are separate. That means the visceral and parietal pleura of the right lung does not communicate with the visceral and parietal pleura of the left lung. Do you follow that? This is important, and here's why. If one lung collapses because they're separate, it will prevent the other lung from collapsing. Here's an example of the body doing stuff that makes sense, right? If, if they were all connected, if you had a little leak in your lung, both lungs would collapse and it would be over for you. Tell me you got that. All right. And watch. The parietal pleura is directly connected to the diaphragm. So this is the outer covering of the lungs. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain to you the inner lining of the respiratory tract. So what I'm going to do is explain to you the lining of, hang on, where is it? The respiratory tree or respiratory tract, right? And we're familiar with this already. The air that enters the nose needs Oh, to yeah. So watch. The lining of the respiratory tract has specialized cells that have what? Cilia. 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 And what do cilia do? They beat. And you better write this down. They always beat from the lower airway to the upper airway. You with me? And the... Tracheal bronchial tree, the respiratory tract, is circular. So this ciliated lining goes around the entire circumference of that tracheal bronchial tree. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. And about every fifth or sixth cell, you have a specialized cell called a goblet cell. And these goblet cells secrete mucus. We'll make it green. They're sick. You got me? Now, <clears throat> when bad stuff gets into your lungs, right? Like pull my finger. That mucus catches that bad stuff. And the cilia will beat it from the upper airway to the back of your throat. Whether you either spit it on the floor like this, <laughs> tweet, or you swallow it. Tell me you got that. So... Anything that impairs the ability of the cilia to move that mucus is going to impair the lungs function because that mucus can start clogging smaller airways. And I think I explained to you a little bit about cystic fibrosis. Did I explain that to you? All right, I'm not going to explain it. You can take another class and learn about that. Say yes. And remember that this is consistent. And know this, that this mucus and cilia and hair like go all the way from your nose all the way down to your bronchioles. The only place that you don't have it is in the alveoli. You got me? So the function of this is to make sure that that airway stays clean. Say yes. Okay. Write this down too. 
the respiratory lining, the internal lining of the respiratory tract is very, that, that's not how you spell very, very vascular. What does that mean? What does that mean? Tons and tons of blood vessels. Tons and tons of blood vessels. Tons and tons of blood vessels. Say yes. Okay. All right. Now, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take you on a little journey through the respiratory tract. <clears throat> this is my uncle. If you, uh, if you want to after class, if you can come right up here and you can see a little polydent right there. Keeping those dentures in. Why would they do that? Like cut this dude in half and leave his dentures in there. I could look at dentures in a freaking bowl. I don't want to look at that. You ever see that uh, Body Works? All right, go look at it. Okay, here we go. You get this right, give you a dollar, and swig up my Diet Mountain Dew. Ready? <clears throat> Why we got two nostrils and not just one big one? Huh? One works at a time. You can breathe through one nostril at a time. When you're sick, you can. <laughs> you, you only got one throat and one trachea. How does that help you? Why do you got two nostrils and not just one big one? If you had one big one, you could get your thumb in there. Watch. Is there bad stuff in the air? <clears throat> Watch. Air, just like blood, if it's going through a straight tube, it will flow in a laminar fashion. What that means is the clean air will flow along the edges and all the debris will flow in the middle. Do you want that in your respiratory tract? No. So by having two nostrils that are separated by a nasal septum, when you take the breath in, when that air collides because it's coming in at two different angles, it produces turbulent airflow. This is what allows that mucus lining and the cilia to clean the air that you breathe in. That's why you got two nostrils and not just one big one. Say yes. How many people know somebody who snorts cocaine? Nobody? 20 people in here, you got to know somebody who snorts cocaine. You know somebody? Thank you. Okay. It's not you, is it, Emma? <laughs> <laughs> Watch. Cocaine mimics the sympathetic nervous system. It mimics epinephrine. What does epinephrine do to all of your blood vessels? Please get this right. It constricts them. You got me? So people who snort cocaine, when that cocaine gets on their nasal septum, it constricts those blood vessels so much, it will cut off blood flow to their nasal septum, and their nasal septum rots. That's why these movie stars back in Haiti who are snorting cocaine, they'd have to actually get nose jobs. They'd have to get plastic nasal septums because their nasal septum was destroyed from snorting cocaine. Yeah, I can tell. Watch. Watch. Boxing, MMA. When they cut themselves, they put that big Q-tip. What's on that Q-tip? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either. That's why I'm asking. Is it Vaseline? Well, they put Vaseline on their face, so it's slippery. Yeah. What's on the Q-tip? Epinephrine. What does epinephrine do to blood vessels? 
constricts them. Oh! When they're bleeding, caught me, me, caught me, and they got that thing up their nose, a big Q-tip up their nose. What's on the Q-tip? Epinephrine. Yeah. Yeah, they just dip it here. It's like a little daddy <laughs> pop. One day I go sucking on some epinephrine. Anybody here take an, an inhaler for asthma? Right. This is what you do. You shake it, then you go. You hit it, you go. Here. <laughs> Watch. Because most people do it wrong. When that inhaler hits the back of your throat, your throat hurts, doesn't it? You know why? Because that drug, albuterol, mimics epinephrine. And what does epinephrine do to blood vessels? And when you constrict the blood vessels in the back of your throat, you're cutting off blood supply to it, and that causes pain. Tell me you got that. Watch. <clears throat> Watch, you're gonna learn this. You're gonna learn something. When you're running or fighting for your life, do you want your airways to be small or big? When you're running or fighting for your life, do you want your heart rate to be high and your blood pressure to be high? Yes. Good, good. So. What causes your heart rate and blood pressure to go up when you're running for your life? The only thing you really know. <laughs> Just say it. <laughs> when in doubt, epinephrine. <laughs> epinephrine, you got me? So what do you think epinephrine does to your airways? Would you want them to constrict? No. Right? So you're running fright for your life. You get up and <laughs> Do you want that? No. You want your airways to open. Say yes. So watch. Watch. A shot of epi because you're having a little asthma attack. Okay, that may be like now you get all the systemic effects. So they bottled this drug that mimics epinephrine called al Butyrol. And then you hit it. There. You following? And what are the side effects of an albuterol inhaler? Increased heart rate. Yeah. Do you see that? That's beautiful. You don't, you, that's learning. If you get that, that's 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 powerful. Tell me you understand that. So that's why parents don't understand why little Joey, he takes his albuterol at eight o'clock, and he's still up at two a.m. watching Cheaters, right? Because he's he's jacked up on a drug that mimics epinephrine. Say yeah. That's how it works. So I'm gonna explain that. How many people got this? All right, watch. What if you got a big booger in this nostril? Are you going to get turbulent airflow? No. no. So the body does stuff that makes sense. When air enters the nasal cavity, there are these little nasal concha. They, it looks like a conch shell, right? It's got these little ridges. And when that air hits it, it creates turbulent airflow, which will mix the air and clean it. So air that you breathe through your nose is cleaner than the air you breathe through your mouth because it has this extra cleaning in the nasal cavity. Say yes. Who's following me? All right. So that air that's in the nasal cavity then travels. The throat or pharynx is divided into three parts. You better write this down. The first part of your throat is called the nasopharynx. Is there bad stuff in the air? Yeah, pull my finger. Do you know why farts smell? No. So deaf people can enjoy them. <laughs> That's so bad. 
Did I tell you this? You know what a Dutch oven is? Yes. I gave my girlfriend a Dutch oven and she threw up in my bed. <laughs> she kicked me out of bed. <laughs> Guys think farts are funny. You're disgusting. How many people think, oh, you didn't know what a Dutch oven was? No. Yeah, that's cool. I know women think farting is farting. disgusting. That's not disgusting, but the homie captives. <laughs> <laughs> like sometimes, um, did I tell you this too? Like uh, on Sundays, Sunday mornings, when my kid was younger, I would always take them and get donuts. Did I tell you this? And then I farted yeah. in there, and that thing would just would not leave, man. Yeah. Okay. Nasal pharynx, watch. Okay, there's a reason why I ask you if there's bad stuff in the air. Do you need to protect your body from bad stuff that's in the air? So you have a part of your lymphatic system in the nasal cavity that's in the nasal pharynx. These things are part of the lymphatic system or the immune system that protects you, and they're called Adenoids. You ever hear of adenoids? Adenoids protect bad stuff from getting in to your, from your nasal cavity. Well, what about when they take Well, you'll get sick and probably die. Watch. The, I'll, I'll explain that in a minute. Then, is there bad stuff that you eat? Yeah. You have some of those Granny Mae cookies down there in the, in the package? That's like cancer in a little package. There's bad stuff in there. So are you eating bacteria? Yeah, all the time. Just had some Klebsiella before class. So to protect your oral airway, you have tonsils. So tonsils are part of the lymphatic system that protect your oral airway. Now watch, watch. There is a redundancy for human beings. We don't eat dirty food like back in the day they would lift up a rock and there would be a grub and they would eat it, right? We don't do that, right? Our food is clean. So there's a redundancy. So you have lymph nodes, part of the lymphatic system, underneath your chin, cervical, around your ears that protect you if you have your tonsils removed. So that's why you don't die if you get your tonsils off most days. Tell me you followed that. All right, so watch. Then you have the oral pharynx, and then finally the laryngopharynx. So these three divisions of the throat or larynx. Say yes. Then finally, if you look, and this is important, and again, the body doing stuff that makes sense. You have this guy right here. This guy is called the epiglottis. The epiglottis is a piece of cartilage that will close over the opening to the larynx when you are eating food. Num, 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 num. Num, 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 num. Then you swallow. Are you with me? And when you swallow, you don't want food going into your respiratory tract, right? So the epiglottis closes over and allows the food to go into the esophagus. So the function of the epiglottis is to prevent food or any foreign particulates from getting into the respiratory tract. Say yes. And anything other than air that gets into your respiratory tract will stimulate coughing, the coughing reflex. Say yeah. All right, so better write this down. What I just explained to you, at least part of it, is the upper airway. So the upper airway includes the nares, the nostrils, the nasal cavity, the nasal pharynx, the oropharynx, the laryngopharynx, say yes, and 
the larynx. The larynx is your voice box. Say yes. Now watch. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going over this. You're going to, you're going to learn this. You're going to need to know the structure of the larynx. The structure of the larynx includes the hyoid bone, thyroid cartilage, and cricoid cartilage. You're going to need to know those pieces. Say yes. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you vocal cords in action. Study, study, study. Them two boys got my money. Okay, watch. What you're looking at here is the structure of the larynx. And then these guys right here, oh, these guys right here are the vocal cords. And the vocal cords are attached to muscles within the larynx and they will vibrate as air passes through the larynx. And as they vibrate, how you move your mouth and tongue determines what words come out. Say yes. These guys right here are referred to as the false vocal cords or the are retinoid cartilage, right? So they're not involved in forming um, speech, but these true vocal cords are attached to them. Now, watch. The, write this down. The opening, the opening here, right here, this is called, wait, the glottis. That's the opening. What's above the glottis? The epiglottis. See, epi above. Okay. Tell me you got, and now you can see the rings of cartilage that make up the larynx. Now, watch. Anytime you damage tissue, you get inflammation. So if the vocal cords become inflamed, then they will not be able to vibrate. And if they can't vibrate, are you able to speak? Well, no. And you get what? You get laryngitis. So there. And this guy's saying, study, study. Them Duke boys got my money. And yelling. Hey! Yeah! Don't they look like a monster? <laughs> like Godzilla vs. Laringo pharynx. Alright, forget it. Say yeah. Alright. So what I just explained to you almost completely is the upper airway. The last part of the upper airway are the sinuses. You need to be able to um, name the sinuses. There are four pairs of sinuses because most of us are symmetrical. You got two eyes, two ears, you know. Are you with me? Okay, now watch. Watch. Write this down. Never forget this. The lining in the sinuses is consistent with the lining of the respiratory tract. So what that means is, is that lining is ciliated and it produces what? Mucus. Mucus. Tell me you got that. Now watch. Timmy's going to educate you now for real. And all of your sinuses 
have these little holes in it called ostia. And the ostia allow the mucus that was produced to drain into your throat, the back of your throat nasal pharynx or oral pharynx. That's why when you go to bed and you have a little sinus drainage, you cough. <laughs> That's pretty good, huh? That was a good cough. Anybody cough? <laughs> Better not. How many people follow this? Yes or no? Okay, I'm gonna educate you now. We're gonna try. Ready? I'm going to take this really slow. This is beautiful. Everything that you've learned up until this point is going to help you understand this. Ready? Watch. What does the word immune mean? Huh? If you're, if you catch a case, right, and they say, if you give up some information, you'll be immune from prosecution. What does that mean? You'll be protected. So what does your immune system do? It protects you. You better write this down. So your immune system, you, I'm not writing it down. You're writing it down. You're students. Oh, really, Celeste? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Celeste thinks she's got it going on because she's got a coat that matches her little tumbler thing over there. See how the color matches her coat? I'm the only one that noticed it. Your immune system protects you, and it protects you by producing producing inflammation. Are you with me? And inflammation is caused by massive arterial vasodilation. Watch. 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 You're running to get out of class. I get it. Right? And you twist your ankle. What does your ankle do? Swells. It swells. If you feel it, how does it feel? Warm. It feels warm. Because inflammation is causing arterial vasodilation in a damaged area. So more arterial blood is going to go there so that area gets warm and red and Swell it. Say yes. Okay. <clears throat> How many people here have allergies? I'm allergic to cats. So if I see a cat, I go, Here, kitty, kitty. <laughs> and I pet it. And then when the dander goes flying up in the air, I go, mm. And I will get an immune response, an exaggerated immune response in the area that that allergen entered, which is my nasal cavity and my sinuses. What does the immune system do? What does it do to protect you? It produces inflammation. And how does it produce inflammation? Massive arterial vasodilation. I'll never forget it. I told you that the respiratory lining is very vascular. Let's go back to the tape. Didn't I say that? So when you have an allergy, it's an exaggerated immune response. And the vascular lining that is in your sinuses, all those arteries dilate. And when they dilate, they cut off the ostia. 
does that lining still produce mucus? But can it drain? So you get a sinus headache or sinus infection. Say yes. Who followed this? So then you go to the doctor and the doctor says, ooh, that's bad for you. So I'm going to give you some medicine that's going to help you. I'm going to give you pseudoephedrine or fake epinephrine. What does epinephrine do to all of your blood vessels? What caused the sinuses to build up mucus? The arteries and the mucosal lining dilating. So you take Sudafed and it will cause the arteries and that mucosal lining to constrict. So when you take a leg well, D, the D is pseudoephedrine, pseudofed. Now watch, watch. It says on the box, if you have high blood pressure, talk to your doctor before taking pseudofed, doesn't it? That's because what? Cool equals systolic blood pressure over resistance. Does Sudafed know just to constrict the arteries in your sinuses? It will constrict the arteries all over your body. And that will increase resistance, which will increase systolic blood pressure. Say yes. You know who will explain that to you? Do you have any idea how good that information is? The education of Gateway Technical College students continues. Rock on with that bad self. Say yes. Tell me, now watch, you don't take Allegra D at night because what you gonna be jacked up on? Oh. Right? I should read the textbook. I ain't sleeping. <laughs> watch how stupid I was. I had this really bad sinus headache, so I took like five Sudafed at night. I'm not even kidding. I was sitting in my bedroom in the corner, rocking back and forth. I was so strung up. And I knew better. I know you did. You did. That's why I'll tell you, watch. People get sinus headaches in the, uh, in, when it's cold out. That's because the air is drier. And when the air dries out your sinuses, the mucus gets thicker. That's why you should drink water until your urine is clear. If you've got any hint of yellow in your urine, you are dehydrated. I want to see everyone down like a liter of water right now before you leave. How many people followed that? For real? Did you? All right. Ambulate home. You ain't even paying attention now. Guys, hey. You're going you're gonna to watch that video. There's one on asthma you're going to watch because I'm going to briefly go over that. I explained it. Um, I explained that in the, the video. Say yeah. And then you're going to watch how and why we breathe, yes? And then Thursday you bring your lab book and your textbook and you're going over the cardiovascular system and the respiratory system. Say yes. All right.